What sort of a role can academia and the research staff play in mitigating the current situation and contribute to a more longer term solution in Sri Lanka? I've invited to our studios to discuss all this and also about education. The uh, Sri Lanka Technology Campus President and CEO and who's also the founder of the Sri Lanka Technology Campus, Engineer Ranjit Rubasingha. Good evening and thank you for joining us in our studios. Good evening and thank you so much for inviting me. Mr. Rubasingha, I spoke about research and um, and also academic staff, how can they contribute? But before that, I think the Sri Lanka Technology Campus is one of the, probably the only campus that is uh, assisting your students continue to learn amid this pandemic, amid a health crisis in Sri Lanka. Uh, you've used technology here. But uh, my question here is how can we help uh, across the country mitigate the impact on education as children stay at home and also professionals continue to stay at home during this pandemic while education can even continue at home when uh, across the world we see distance learning methods uh, being implemented. So I think thank you so much for taking that question. I, 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 should, I, I should thank for the people those who are actually working in mm -hmm. my university for doing that. The most important thing was the preparedness. I think we, we prepared previously knowing the trend towards this in the world. So that's, that's very important. Even whatever that happened during these days, preparedness okay. is most important thing. So we actually from the day one, we converted our operation into online without basically hindering any kind of a, uh, op op any kind of a situation or, or operation. So, uh, we are fully online. We are delivering all our ac academic activities and everything online. So everything continues without hindrance? Everything is continuing. For how long have you planned? Actually, we, we had our setups in place. So it, it's a matter of instructing our staff to start delivering online and also students to be ready and take the lectures online. So we have a we have now basically improved over the time within last couple of years into a different level in online delivery platform so we can actually expand this to the entire country or the other institutions as well at the same time i must say like uh, i mean however we do things in sri lanka world is actually moving towards that okay. so all leading universities in the in the world is now on delivering things on but but sri lanka uh, students uh, staff they're not very uh, much open to the idea of distance learning this is what we've seen in the past but i know the sri lanka technology institute the campus has been able to uh, implement this uh, quite quite uh, uh, positively that is actually the perception that we had then and then those perception of course prevent us doing new things but when we when we are implementing these the things, people are ready to adapt towards that situation. So the perfect example is now in in usual case case in now in a physical class in my my university, the attendance within eighty or less than eighty percent is somewhere around that. Right. But in my online class, student attendance is generally more than eighty percent. It goes up to ninety ninety two percent. So these students will definitely be adapt. Yeah, how can we how can we look at a longer term solution? Because uh, yes, COVID nineteen this is this is not it. We have to look at uh, preparing ourselves. As you said, you prepared ahead when when the world trend was changing. But in Sri Lanka, how can we use technology for the future and the betterment of education? And also, uh, we know that technology. There are challenges across the country where we reach the the, the most remote areas. But that while that challenge rem uh, remains, how do you propose we go about this? Uh, uh, one thing uh, you asked about the re technology readiness mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So I think we have uh, we are a country with uh, higher the reasonably high penetration in uh, 4G and 3G technology. So internet penetration is quite high. And then uh, th I, I, at the same time we have uh, restrictions as well. So affordability and everything restrict people come online and also the e uh, equipments that they use might not basically adequate for online learning environment. So those are things. But what we can do is we can think of alternate, te alternate technologies for countries like us. So how can we combine uh, television uh, channel together with the uh, proper learning platform mm -hmm. and do a com combined solution. So there are a lot of things that we can think of in a, in a situation like this. And at the same time, what I should uh, highlight here is it's very important that we think in long term. Mm -hmm. Because I, we should not expect 
uh, this to be finished within a couple of weeks just after curfew goes off. So, the industry like education should plan for at least a semester. Uh -huh. So, that is that's our assessment at the moment and that is the world assessment as well. So, we are planning ourselves for at least 6 months ahead how we be online and doing right. our stuff. So, it is very important to pre keeping standards uh -huh. in education. So, those are the challenges that we actually got. The, there is one more area I would like to venture into as I said we would like to talk about research and uh, the help of academia in mitigating the current situation and looking at research led innovations uh, using technology. The Sri Lanka technology campus what is the contribution here and what do you personally see in terms of the contribution of academy and research? I mean what we did first we shut down our university physically for education, but we encouraged and uh, continue our research mm -hmm. and we made their contribution compulsory and the continuation of their research. And the trend is now actually most of our researchers and not in our university, but in the most of the universities they are now thinking of the possible contribution that they can make to the government and to the country to overcome this situation. So, there are a lot of projects going on at the moment with the contribution of my staff and the rest of the staff. We are thinking of guided uh, trolley for this uh, hospitals and we are thinking of developing a low cost, uh, low cost uh, mm -hmm. ventilators and, and, and at the same time we are thinking of developing and we are actually researching developing a low cost or free solution for delivering online content to the school kids in the country. So, I mean now it is a high time for academia to work with the rest of the uh, people in the sector. And in, also in research the into medical uh, innovation. Exactly. So, that 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 come uh, that uh, relationship or that uh, working together culture is very important at the moment. So, I know like the, re the medical doctors and the other people can contribute and be part of this whole thing together with academia. So, and academia can contribute to their operation in a big way. Particularly for COVID-19, I mean we know that we talk about social distancing, but how can we use that as a technology uh, in terms of treating our patients? There are many ways. I think there are there are things happening in the country as well at the moment in a small scale, but uh, but the the technologies can be can be used in big way if academia can contribute and join with the medical setup which mm -hmm. which we are actually doing at the moment. Right. So we are trying to introduce a patient monitoring system distantly and also we are trying to uh, develop a system uh, to deliver the required stuff to the patient distantly and also to have the communication distantly with the patient. Those are the things that we can Wonderful. think of and at the same time it is very important that we think of a long term mm -hmm. uh, solution for everything where academia can be part of in a big way. Thank you very much Mr. Rubasinger for joining us. We had with us uh, engineer Ranjit Rubasinger joining us uh, on first at nine.